Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome to Wix Fixer. This is Velo 101, or learning JavaScript with Wix code. Today, we are going to be throwing an input into the mix and also learning about variables and how to concatenate strings. So let's get started. Okay, so for this demonstration, you should have a simple setup of an input, a button, and a text box. And the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and name our elements. So for this input, I'll call name input. And this button, I will call send button. And this text, will I'll call hello text. And what we're going to be doing here is somebody will be inputting their name into the name input. And then when you click the button, it will display hello plus the person's name inside of the text box. And this is a pretty simple example, but it's a very useful building blocks for other projects that you might want to build in the future. So it's always good that when you're attacking a kind of slightly more advanced problem than what we've had until now, you break it down into steps. So what's going to happen here? So the person is going to put something into the input box. That's something that the user does. And then when they click the button, we want something to happen. So the first thing we need to deal with is clicking the button. Uh, sorry, clicking button. OK, and you can see here that when you use two dashes, this is what's called a comment. So this is code that our website won't read and won't execute. So you can use it to kind of just write yourself notes within your JavaScript. Uh, it, usually, you will want to remove these before you actually publish your website in its final version. But it's not a huge deal. Uh, and the next thing that we're going to want to do is get the value that's in the input. And we're going to set the value of the text box. OK, so these are the three things that we kind of need to do. So let's get started with number one, which is clicking the button. So in order to deal with the clicking of the button, we need to set an event listener, which is what we talked about last time. And if you don't remember that, then I would recommend going back and watching the previous video or trying to pick it up from this demonstration. So first, we're going to select our button element using dollar sign $W. And the name of our element is send button. And then we're going to be adding the on click event listener. Okay, And remember, whatever goes in this line is what's going to happen when we click the button. So what do we want to happen when we click the button? We want to change this text. So we're going to be setting the value of this text. So this is our hello text. And this is going to be equal to something. Uh, and the thing it's going to be equal to is going to depend here on the value of this text box. So what we could do here is we could either just use the value of the text box directly. Sorry, this hello text is going to be dot text. So we're setting the text property of this element. And we could either just say this will be equal to our name input dot value, like that, plus something else that we're going to add later on. Or what we can do is we can store this value inside something that's called a variable. And a variable, you can think of it as just kind of a box which we can store information in. And this value of this input is information, and we can store it inside of that variable. And in general, there are two ways to declare quote unquote variables. Declaring means saying what the value of that variable is. One keyword is const, and the other one is let. You might also hear about another keyword that's called var, but it's largely been depreciated in favor of the let keyword. OK, so I'm just going to focus here on const and let. And the difference between them is, is when you use the const keyword, it's going to be a constant. 
So it's something that you don't foresee the value of it changing, and it's something that you can't change the value of in your code. Well, as let is a variable that could change, okay? And because this input is not going to be changing throughout the onClick event, okay, it might change in between click events, but each time we declare the variable, it's going to be a new value that doesn't change. We're going to be using the const keyword here, and we'll talk more about the let keyword later on. So what I'm going to do is I am going to declare our variable, and I'm actually going to call this variable name. So name is both the name of the variable and it's a variable name, uh, which might be a little confusing, but as we use more variables later on, it will become more clear. And we use the equal sign to assign the value of the variable. And this variable is going to be equal to the value of our input. So now, every time that we click the send button, the first thing that we do is we assign this name variable a value that's the value that's in the input. And each time, it's as if we're creating this variable from the beginning, and that's why we can use the const here, and we don't need to use let, even though our variable is changing. And now, here, instead of using this uh, name input dot value, I can actually just say, okay, this equals to name. And this is equivalent to what we had done before. And this is extremely useful if, for example, we wanted to take this name variable and use it in other places in our code. Uh, let's say we had a few things happening here with this on click. Let's say I also wanted to console.log the name. Okay. I wanted to do a few things, so it's very useful to use variables. And as we said here, we don't only want to assign it the value of name, we also want to say hello. And in order to do that, we're going to need to add the string hello before the name. But as you can see here, we have a red squiggly line and an error because in order to connect strings with other strings, uh, and you remember here that this name here is a string because that's the value that we're getting back from this input. So in order to connect two strings, we have to use the plus sign, okay? And this will connect these two strings together and it'll connect them as is. So it's important to add a space here after the hello if we want a space between our hello and the name. Another way that we have of concatenating strings, that's what this is called in the fancy way, uh, connecting strings together is something called a template literal, and we'll touch on that later on, but I just wanted to point that out while we're talking about it. So here we have our code, and what we can do now is preview to make sure that everything is working. So I'm gonna click here, preview, And now I'm going to add my name here, and I'm going to click the button, and you can see that the text says, hello, Aton. One more tip that I want to give you is to change the value here in this paragraph to a fallback value, quote unquote. And what's a fallback value? It means a value that will display if our code for some reason doesn't work. Uh, and that's one of the perks here of using Wix is that we can kind of just set up this fallback value uh, using the drag and drop editor. We don't need any code. And then if there's, for some reason there's a problem with our code, it'll just display that. So I can just say here, for example, hello friend. Sorry. Okay. And now I'm going to create an intentional uh, error in my code. So it's not going to work. But when I preview my code, I'll still have this value of hello friend and not I'm a paragraph something, 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 even though the name isn't working. Okay, so that is how to set up an input using uh, Wix elements and Velo. And that is also how you use variables and how you concatenate or add together two strings. 
So I hope you found this lesson valuable. Uh, and if you did, please subscribe because there's going to be more videos like this coming out. Feel free to give me a like. It really helps uh, encourage me to make more videos. And I hope to see you next time.